Oh, hi, everyone. Welcome to a short tips and tricks episode of Betrayer. And I don't uh, give you these uh, suggestions as an expert in the game. I'm not an expert in the game. But I did just play something like 30 episodes and, uh, of the game. And so there are a variety of things that I wish I had known then that I do now. And so I thought I would just mention a few of them, some of the things that uh, would have saved me a lot of time in the game. Um, and some of these things, suggestions, you're going to say, well, duh, that stuff's obvious. But you know what? Being a bit of a chimp myself, I didn't always, uh, don't always pick up on these things. So the first thing I want to mention is on the map. As you go through the map, you unlock various destinations, these markers here. I did not know uh, initially that you could fast travel uh, one to the next in these things. So, for example, right now I'm here in Fort Hope. I could travel all the way back to Fort Henry and pick the fort there. And I'm here. It takes a moment to load the map. Well, that took longer than I thought. So, when I was running around in the game, I was actually walking from place to place. Yeah, I know, that's amusing. Um, and I would, for the episodes, I would just put my recording on pause and then start up my recording when I arrived at my location. But uh, had I known that I could fast travel, that would have saved me a lot of time and a lot of headache too because as you walk from one place to another you run across the mobs um, that try to kill you and often do so um, that's one thing I wish I had known when I started the game second thing I wish I had known um, speaking of mobs and this was suggested to me but for some reason I uh, didn't really pay much attention I think it's because I like the guns but the tomahawks, you see them down there in the lower right. I have three tomahawks. When you start the game, you only have one. And then as you find artifacts, you'll get two. And then eventually you'll be able to carry three when you find, I think they call it a tomahawk harness or belt or something like that. Um, it is very nice. These tomahawks are very nice because as you run around and you come across the mobs, if you can use the tomahawks to stealth kill these guys, um, you don't alert their friends. I don't know which direction that guy is facing, if he's facing me, or if he's facing away from me. So let's try to sneak up on this character. And we're going to use the tomahawk. The teak. Oh boy, he's right there. I don't know which direction he's facing. Okay, he's away, facing away from me. See, I was able to kill him without alerting that guy over there. If I had shot this gun, two or three of them would have come running. Another thing you can do is to stealth kill. Okay, this guy here uh, is facing away from me. Let's use the wind to cover our... See if we can sneak up to this guy. There you go. Much easier in a lot of ways than the gun. The gun's fun, but when you fire off the gun, you're going to have to fight off two, three, or four of these guys. If you can stealth kill like that, you'll save yourself a lot of time and effort. Another thing uh, that I thought I would mention was throughout the map, you're going to... Um, 
come across uh, various buried items. I spent a lot of time unburying these items once I got the shovel. And uh, I hope this isn't considered a spoiler, but a lot of those buried items um, are, how do I put this, they're sort of like treats. They're cool weapons, they're stuff like that. They're not necessarily clues that you have to you have to solve the various um, investigations you're going through. And speaking of investigations, here in the notes um, are the investigations, and you'll see various names of people. Well, as you begin the game, these this notebook will be empty, but as you come across clues scraps of paper, things like that, um, you'll come across names. Some of the names may be on graves, uh, pieces of paper and clues, and that kind of stuff. And so they become investigations of what happened to these people. Okay, here's the notes. These are uh, a lot of things. Here's an example of a note that I picked up. Okay, and um, I know I'm rambling a bit now, but basically, as you come across these investigations, you need to solve them so that in the end of the game, the final boss isn't as strong. Uh, you'll get an opportunity of telling these spirits and these wraiths and various lost souls uh, that they can be at peace and various things like that. And for every one that you dismiss, the boss is less strong. So it's to your advantage to solve as many of those investigations as possible. Now to help you solve these investigations, you're going to come across wraiths and uh, undead or shadows, I think they call them, in the map. I spent a ton of time looking for them because I did not know that their locations on the maps were marked. For some reason, when I started the game, these guys were unchecked and I did not know that I could check them and it would put a marker on the map where these geezers were. So I spent a lot of time just walking around in the other world hoping on happening upon some of these wraiths and shadows. Make sure when you play the game you have these two items marked and as you go through each map you'll find the shadows and wraiths that are involved in the various activities that happened in the storyline. Another thing you need to know about the wraiths and shadows that I did not know initially, not all of them will be on their designated spot when you look for them. Because some of them do not show up on the map. The, you know, the actual guy, the actual geezer does not show up on the map until he is mentioned in the storyline by another wraith. So, um, you have to revisit places where you were, and there was not a wraith, because at some point, they'll show up, based on conversations you'll have with other wraiths and shadows. Also, um, you'll need to go back and forth between the wraiths and the shadows and the various characters in the investigations, because as you learn more, the wraiths you talked to a few moments earlier will now remember additional information. And then when they remember additional information, the wraith you had just talked to before will himself remember some additional information. And eventually, by going back and forth between the various characters in the investigations, um, you will be able to solve that particular riddle. Um, and also, another thing that's nice to know is that if you look at your notes and in the investigations, it tells you right here what map this is on. And I believe I'm right in saying this, I'm not 100% certain, that all the information you need to solve what happened to Edmund Goddam is on Fort Henry. Or whatever happened to Captain Wilkinson is on the Sentry Post map. I don't think that there are clues for his investigation on the other maps. 
but I could be wrong about that. After a while, I got so turned around going from map to map to clue to clue to race to shadow, and after a while, I was just happy when these guys began to get themselves solved. So that's another way of saving yourself time. Because, for example, we're on the Fort Henry map, the first map. Had I known these Wraiths and Shadows were here, I could have perhaps solved some of these investigations as I went. But the guys were not marked for me, so I had to come back multiple occasions to finally begin to solve some of these riddles. Um, so, that's just uh, something to save yourself a lot of time. And another thing I wanted to mention, again, I hope this is not a spoiler, um, some of the items that, or some of the activities you're doing are only really count to accomplish some of the Steam um, accomplishments or, um, gosh, I'm sorry, I'm having a, a senior moment, I can't remember what they call them, but you know, the achievements, the Steam achievements. So some of the things on the you're doing in the story aren't really that important as far as the actual storyline goes. They are just more for the gameplay um, to enhance the gameplay. I missed him. I didn't miss him that time. Um, because I killed his buddies over here earlier, they didn't come running, so... That's one example of how stealth killing can be really uh, to your advantage. So I'm not going to tell you which um, activities don't really count toward the story. Um, can I kill him just for fun? Yes, indeedy. <laughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> I'm sorry. I uh, should be giving you tips and tricks, and uh, here I am just having fun killing things. <laughs> but let's face it, that's really what the game is all about. There's another geezer. Surprisingly, he was not alerted um, to my presence with the gunshot when I killed that guy there. So anyway, um, to sum up, Make sure you fast travel to save yourself a lot of time in walking and in dealing with mobs that you don't necessarily have to run into um, if you don't have to. Make sure that you clear out the maps as you go. Make sure you have your wraiths and your shadows of your map uh, marked so that you know where they are. And if they're not on their designated spot, that means that they're, they're not mentioned in the story yet, and you have to go find a clue to show to another wraith or shadow to get them to remember something, and then perhaps your wraith that's missing will suddenly show up, and that'll give you another lead to solving the investigation. Solve as many investigations as you can, so that... Um, the final boss is uh, not as strong. <coughs> Excuse me. Stealth kill. Save yourself a lot of effort. Use your tomahawks. You can recover them for the most part. Uh, I notice I missed one right here. Um, but you'll save yourself a lot of effort in going to the store over here and replacing all of your musket balls and various things like that. Um, dig up as many items as you can. Just be aware that not all of them have a bearing on any of the uh, investigations, although you don't know which ones are important and which ones aren't. And, um, and the most important aspect of the game is to have fun. This is a blast of a game. It's, um, it's a slow-paced game at times, but it's visually stunning, and it's mentally challenging, and um, I spent most of the storyline not knowing what the heck was going on. So it was very rewarding at the end uh, when I finally figured it out, defeated the final boss, and... Um, 
now I can feel good about uh, the game. So I hope you enjoyed this little tips and tricks. If you have any uh, comments, please leave them down below. And I hope you enjoyed the game series as much as I enjoyed making it. And uh, I look forward to doing more series. Hopefully, Betrayer will have a sequel. I don't know if that's true or not. If there is a sequel planned, but I'm sure hoping on it. So, um, anyway, have fun playing the game.